This machine you see here is a hand cranked coffee mill. You can see it has this drum in the back with these knobs on it. And this is, these knobs will tear off the flesh of a coffee cherry, exposing the coffee beans. You put the coffee cherry up here at the top. And coffee beans, raw coffee beans, will come out here, and you can then set them out in the sun to dry for a few days. This is, this is the first step in making coffee, is you have to, to process the raw coffee cherries and get the beans out. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a cup of coffee, but we're going to start from scratch. We're going to start out here in a coffee orchard. We'll pick some ripe coffee cherries, process them, dry them, roast them and grind them, and finally we'll have our cup of coffee. But it's going to take several days, so we're going to need to get started right away. And it all starts out here in a coffee orchard. It starts with these ripe coffee cherries. The first thing we're going to need is a picker's basket. Let's see if I can figure out how to put this thing on. The basket will hang off the front, off my front, and this should go um, on my back. It's a little bit of a tangle, but I'll see if I can get it on. You see it's cloudy and probably it's going to rain pretty soon. This is a perfect climate for growing coffee. Coffee trees grow at elevation in the tropics and they love rain. I don't know how much rain it gets on this farm here but it is probably over 150 inches a year. In fact it may start raining on us now so we're going to have to hurry. If we come up and look at a healthy tree we'll see that there's a large stump on the bottom. And then every few years as the tree grows it gets cut off and has to re-sprout from the stump. This is done to keep the coffee cherries, uh, to keep them coming out and uh, forming. If this just was allowed to turn into a large tree you wouldn't get this many of uh, the coffee cherries. So this is done entirely for production. Now here's another stump and you can see how many times it's been cut in the past. But it keeps growing and it keeps producing coffee cherries. As a coffee picker we're going to get paid by the weight. We want to pick the red ones off and we want to leave the green ones and the yellow ones. On a cheaper coffee the temptation is to pick them all real quick, to zip them all off the stem all at the same time. And of course that's going to affect the flavor of the coffee. It's going to have more of a soury taste. So we'll pick the cherries off and put them in our bucket. All right, this represents about 10 minutes worth of work on one coffee tree. Normally when we're harvesting coffee cherry like this there'll be a crew of maybe 10 or 15 people and they can harvest one or two thousand pounds of coffee per day and it will go to a, a large-scale mill up the road. It won't go, we won't use something small like this but we're gonna make one cup of coffee today so we'll use this hand cranked mill and we'll see what happens.
Okay, I'm going to stop for a minute and let's look in the back. You can see the husks are falling out underneath the machine. This little drum peels the husks off and leaves the seeds. It separates the two. All right, this is what you wind up with. You can see the husks down at the bottom here, the red husks, and you can see chickens don't really like them. And over in the box, you can see the raw coffee beans. The next step will be to take the coffee beans and to lay them out in the sun for a few days to dry. All right, our coffee sat out in the sun for four days and it is now dry. You can see there's a layer of skin on the outside of the coffee bean. It's known as parchment. So there's basically a green coffee bean with this tan colored parchment on the outside. If you're ever going to store coffee, this is the best way to do it. But if you want to roast coffee, you'll have to take the parchment skin off in which case you'll be left with something known as green coffee, which we have right here. Green coffee is parchment coffee with the parchment removed, and it's ready for roasting. You can see there's a very fine skin on the outside of the green coffee, known as silver skin, but that comes off naturally during roasting. So the next step for us will be to remove the parchment from our coffee. And because we don't have very much, there are some very tricky little techniques we can use. Okay, the key here to roasting coffee in a pan is to keep it stirred up, keep it moving. It's been about three or four minutes into this and you can see it's starting to turn brown slightly. Also, some of the silver skin chaff is coming off. 
You can see that in the pan as well. We're at the stage now they call first crack. You can hear them popping like popcorn. Now, I'm not an expert on roasting coffee, but this does look like something that I could drink. So I'm going to take this and put it into a colander now. And we'll use the colander to help cool it off. You can see all the silver skin that has come through the colander onto the stove underneath. We'll let that cool down and then we'll try some. And there you have it, from the farmer's field to the coffee cup, some fine Kona coffee. Tastes great.